right, Trading Wednesday. A little while ago, my dad was cleaning out some stuff in his house and located my first trilogy titled Stories About Jane, the second volume also titled Stories About Jane, and the third volume titled Afterwards, with the helpful subtitle Conclusion of Stories About Jane. Jane was eight years old, which is a tip-off that I was probably eight years old when I wrote this because I always made my characters the same age I was. Here's the sentence I love. She, though not Chinese, lived in China. That sentence tells me so much. First of all, it tells me that I already know how to use a subordinate clause. Is that what it is? A subordinate or a dependent clause. Anyway, you know, set off by commas. At eight, which impresses me. It also tells me that I had this desire to set my story in an exotic locale, but I also knew I wasn't up to the task of tackling a completely foreign culture. I didn't want to make her Chinese because I knew I couldn't cope with that, but I wanted to put her in China. So it turns out that Jane's learning, the first story, really is about Jane learning her numbers, then learning the alphabet. After two chapters of Jane basically mastering, you know, literacy and numeracy, uh, we finally get to a chapter with some drama in it. Jane's illness. One day, Jane became sick. So sick that she must lie on her bed all day. She put up with this last thing with a struggle, for her bed was only a few boards with some prickly strips of hay on it. I've been wondering what I was thinking in making Jane, though not Chinese, live in China, because presumably my only exposure to not Chinese people living in China would have been missionaries. Yet Jane's family is clearly so poor that they seem much more like Chinese peasants. And later on we discover that they go to church and that's quite a new thing for them. So clearly they're not missionaries. But we do find out during Jane's illness that her family did not believe in the Chinese doctors and she needed one. The doctor that they wanted to see, well to get to his house and back, it would take a week to get each way. Well they drag her there and the doctor with his brilliant medical knowledge says, she'll get better. The family believed him. Jane would get better. But when and how? As you can see, I, you know, I had the idea of ending on a cliffhanger. But then the next chapter just starts, the doctor was right, Jane did get better. Boy, really resolved that suspense there. The writers of Sherlock could learn something from me. So we're up to the fifth chapter in stories about Jane. And I note that I have decided to solve the narrative problem I've created myself. Pretty soon, Jane's family moved away from China. They moved back to Canada, where they had lived some years before. Because obviously, I was having a little trouble with this whole Chinese setting that I'd stuck myself with that I knew nothing about. So clearly, let's get the family back to Canada and never worry about what they were doing in China in the first place. You'll be happy to know, however, that China is not entirely forgotten because at the end of that chapter, Jane says to her friend Sue Ann, after discovering that Sue Ann goes to school every day, so this is where you go each day. Later, Jane made a vow that someday she would go back and teach in China. Well, I know that the second book starts with a chapter titled, Two Years After. The years would soon be come and gone. I really don't know what I'm doing tense-wise in that sentence. The years would soon be come and gone. Jane now saw that Canada was her real home. She had been born there. The girl hardly ever remembered China, where she had been raised, but where her author had been so fatally incapable of setting a story. So in the second book, there are a few dramatic incidents. Jane gets lost, and she sits down and cries until there is a huge puddle of muddy water at her feet, a vivid though highly unlikely detail. Afterwards, jumps us several years forward in time with a chapter called A Hard Decision. As Jane grew older, she got more friends, not only girls but she had several boyfriends. Oh, I remember this part. This is where my mother actually gave me some editorial advice upon reading an early draft in which I had said that Jane decided she was going to marry Jimmy Jones and then they got married. And my mom pointed out that that was an unlikely way to approach marriage and that some kind of relationship had to occur first. And I actually edited it to have Jane say, I can't just say him and marry him. Jim's got to love me, which oddly didn't occur to me on the first draft and probably says a lot about my approach to relationships at that stage of my life. So Jane gets married, predictably has two children, a girl named Alice and a boy called Tommy, not sure why the quotes, and Jane, who has now, to the narrator, become mother, told stories of her childhood, many of which are told to you in stories about Jane. I can't imagine why her children didn't just die of boredom. But note the very last sentence of the third volume. The Joneses also fulfilled the promise, for the last words in book one are, 
Jane made a vow that someday she would go back and teach in China. They all did. Seriously, that's how I resolved the whole go back to China thing. In three words at the end, they all did. And the other thing is, if you look at the page, you can clearly see that this was written in at the end afterwards when I must have finished my story with Jane, a happy matriarch with her children around her, and suddenly went, oh, shoot, I said she was going to go back to China. I really don't want to write about China, so I just stuck in those last two sentences. All I can say is, you know, I often feel that I have difficulty with plot and with developing a really interesting plot that builds to a climax and resolves, but I have come a long way. And maybe that's the most important lesson to be learned from reading through your own early writings. Go dig out some of yours and try it, and let me know what you find. I'd love to know.